Our work is frequently a source of stress. But how exactly does occupational stress work? One possibility is the so-called effort-reward imbalance. And today we'll take a look at that. Welcome to the Soft Skill Channel. My name is Sebastian Jung and today I would like to present to you the effort-reward imbalance model. I've mentioned it briefly in my book review of Feyerabend by Volker Keats, but today we'll look at it in more detail. So what is an effort-reward imbalance? As the name implies, there is an imbalance between the effort you put in and the reward you get out. The effort includes um, all of the yes, effort you put in at work, the level of commitment, um, your exertion and all of the strains and pressures you have to deal with, such as uh, time pressure, high work intensity, uh, maybe noise or distractions, things like that. Reward, on the other hand, includes three important aspects. The first is the material aspect, your salary and things like bonuses. The second is a personal appreciation such as praise, positive feedback you get from your superiors or from your colleagues. And the third is social status. This includes job security and it also includes possibilities for advancement. All three of those aspects are important and each one is important by itself. So it's not just the sum of all three that is relevant. For example, it wouldn't make sense to say, well, we can fire you from one day to the next, but to counterbalance that, we pay you a bit more. This wouldn't work. Um, apart from factors that are mainly external, the effort-reward imbalance is also influenced by personal factors, especially if um, you tend to overcommit, to put in excessive effort and to um, yeah, over, over exert yourself for your work. This is a risk factor in regard to the effort reward imbalance. Of course, this is a bit of a problematic point because um, if, you, if you don't overdo it, commitment and working hard and putting in an extra effort are uh, positive things that are wished for by employers um, usually. However, if the employer is not able to um, appreciate this additional effort and to reward it, reward it accordingly, then it can become a risk factor for an effort-reward imbalance. So why is it important to us that effort and reward match? Scientists found out that when we interact with another person, and this interaction is based on reciprocity. Um, if what we give and what we receive in turn um, balance out, then this triggers the regions for rewards in our brains and dopamine is released, which causes positive feelings. And this does not happen if the other party is not a human, but a computer who has been prepared for some experiment accordingly. So it seems that this re reciprocity, um, the fairness between giving and receiving, that this is very important to us on a fundamental level. And if this principle is hurt, if effort and reward um, 
do not are not are not corresponding to each other then this causes problems this leads to occupational stress which in turn um, increases the risk of health issues there is a range of possibilities for example higher blood pressure higher blood pressure heart attacks, depressions, alcoholism or other kinds of addictive behavior. Uh, there is a wide range. There have been several studies um, looking at uh, the effort reward imbalance specifically, but in general the risks are probably similar to stress related to general stress related issues and there you can have a look at um, why zebras don't get ulcers by robert sapolsky which is basically a catalog of all of the issues um, of all of the medical health issues you can uh, suffer in relation to stress um, it can also cause long-term issues, um, the risk of uh, early retirement due to medical problems is increased and it might, in, uh, might decrease your quality of life after retirement. So um, let's, let's make up an example. Let's say Leo here is an employee and um, his job is quite taxing, his department was recently reduced in size, a couple of people have been fired, um, but the work has stayed the same, so fewer people need to do the same work. <coughs> Sorry, Work intensity has increased, there is a lot of time pressure, there is a lot of <coughs> noise and distractions because Leo is working in an open space office and uh, every couple of days uh, there is a big crisis where everybody has to work overtime so his work is quite strenuous and leo is a guy who puts in a lot of effort leo is quite committed and yeah he tends to overexert himself he tends to overcommit as for rewards leo recently found out that his salary is lower than that of his colleagues who do exactly the same work. He rarely gets any appreciation from his superiors and not very much from his colleagues either. His uh, contract is temporary and he doesn't know if he will get another one. And uh, yeah, several colleagues have been fired recently and he wonders if he might be the next and there is very little possibility for advancement. Yeah, so Leo suffers from an effort reward imbalance. He gets serious depressions and dies from a heart attack. Finished. Now it isn't quite that easy and not that severe. An effort reward imbalance will not cause a medical problem. It increases the risk of it happening. So it's not like you're going to, to your doctor and say, doctor, I suffer from an effort reward imbalance. How many days do I have left? This isn't the way this works. But it is of course a grave social problem on a statistical level because in Leo's company, there are probably a lot of other employees for whom the situation isn't much different and who probably suffer from the same effort reward imbalance. And furthermore, Leo's company is probably not that different from all of the other companies in his country or all of the other companies in the world. So there is a great number of people who suffer from an effort reward imbalance and for whom certain medical, um, for whom there is a higher risk of certain medical problems such as depression, heart attack, etc. Um, and due to the great number of people, this is a severe issue because this will end up, um, there will end up 
uh, in the end we will have a great number of people who for example uh, will suffer a heart attack that they might not have suffered without the effort reward imbalance. So it is very important to take actions against it and we will um, look at ways to do that in a moment. But first a bit more information. The effort reward imbalance was um, the model was uh, created by a Swiss medical sociologist, Johannes Sechrist, um, but it is internationally, internationally renowned and well known. It is one of the two uh, most popular and most established models that deal with occupational stress, the other being the demand control model or job demand control model. Um, this one has recently been further developed into the job demand control support model. Um, there are a couple of more models who deal with occupational stress, but those two, the job demand control support model and the effort reward imbalance model, those are the most well established and well known ones. Um, as for sources, my main source was a German book, however I will provide a link to an English one by Johannes Sechrist in the video description. Unfortunately it seems to be quite expensive, um, but uh, there aren't that many alternatives. And there are plenty of studies by Sechrist and other researchers and I will also um, provide information about one in the video description. Um, so what do scientists do to figure out if someone is suffering from an effort reward imbalance or if a certain group um, let's say employees of a certain company or certain department are suffering from an effort reward imbalance. Of course you can use some tool to measure the uh, level of reciprocity to measure whether efforts and reward match. So um, standardized questionnaires are used and um, they measure the subjective experience of um, the affected people. So um, to what degree they experience their situation as imbalanced and unfair. Um, the questionnaire includes questions such as considering the effort I put in, I get um, um, sufficient appreciation from my superior and the people who fill out the questionnaire uh, rank this statement on a scale from let's say uh, 1 to 10 according to how much it applies to their own situation. Where do effort reward imbalances occur? First of all, there is a strong social gradient here, which means um, people in the low wage sector, people with little qualification um, tend uh, to have a higher, higher chance to suffer from an effort reward imbalance. I guess this is pretty obvious since it, since it includes things like uh, salary and job security, which are lower in the low wage sector. So uh, people with uh, um, who are working at a, uh, who have a job with a lower social status have a higher risk than people with a higher social status. Furthermore, the effort reward imbalance is not a culture specific phenomenon. There have been studies, for example, in Japan or in China, um, who proved that the phenomenon also occurs there. So it is a general phenomenon that occurs worldwide. 
Um, and finally, even though the effort reward imbalance um, primarily is a model for occupational stress, for paid work, it has turned out it also occurs for unpaid work, such as housework or caring for relatives, and it can even also occur in other uh, interactions and relationships, such as the relationship between parents and children or the relationship between spouses. So, what can we do against this problem of effort reward imbalance? First, what can you do if you are affected? On a personal level, you can try to increase your coping capabilities, so you are able to better deal with um, this situation. Um, I have given a lot of recommendations for that in my How to Deal with Stress series. Uh, I will provide a link to the playlist in the video description. There you can get a lot of information on what you can do to improve your coping capabilities. And of course, it is especially important to deal with um, issues of overexertion, overcommitment, if you have those, because those are a very big risk factor in regard to an effort reward imbalance. Now, of course, um, um, what you can do on a personal level is limited if there is an effort reward imbalance um, because um, the uh, effort requested of you is very high and the reward is very low, you won't be able to, do, uh, to deal with that just by improving your coping capabilities. Um, you will need to try to negotiate with your superiors, your employer, to try to get rid of some of the uh, factors that put pressure and strain on you and that um, um, increase the problem. And if that doesn't work out, you might need to uh, try looking for a, a better job uh, where you have a better situation. Now, of course, I understand that this is easier said than done because as I just mentioned, um, the effort reward imbalance is more likely to occur in the low wage sector where people yeah, have, don't have a strong standing in negotiations with uh, the employer. So the chances to improve the situation are limited and it might also be difficult to find a job where the situation really is uh, better. But uh, unfortunately, there is no better advice I can give on this point. If the co company actually um, wants to take action against the problem of effort reward imbalances, there are more, more options. First, they can um, work against the issue uh, on a personal level as well by offering courses for stress management. To the employees. Uh, this is very useful, of course, but um, actions should not be limited to that. It's also very important to establish a culture of appreciation. And here, uh, superiors need to take the lead and implement the change uh, for which it might be necessary to have additional trainings for those as well. And finally, um, action should also be taken on a structural and organizational level to reduce the factors that put additional strain and additional pressure on the employees as much as possible um, to also make improvements on that level. Finally, actions again against the effort reward imbalance problem can even be taken on a government level. Um, studies have shown, for example, that in the Scandinavian countries, the risk to suffer from a effort reward imbalance are lower um, 
and that is supposedly because those countries have a very strong social system with a lot of social security which probably balances out some of the job risks people suffer from. Um, so these are um, the actions we can take against uh, the effort reward imbalance. How is the situation for you? Have you uh, suffered from an effort reward imbalance and how were you able to deal with it? What was helpful to you? Please let me know in the comments. This might also be helpful for other viewers. I'm looking forward to your feedback. <clears throat> Sorry. And if you enjoyed the video, I would also appreciate a like. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please consider doing so. I would be quite happy to have you as a subscriber. We will see each other next week when we talk about stress and sex, which will probably also, which will probably also be very interesting. For today, I'll take my leave. Have a nice day. See you next time.